Hello YouTube, Liverpool fan in Japan here, the Miyazaki man Sai. And today I'm going to give you insight into why it's premature to assume that Ruben Amorin has already been chosen by Liverpool FC and a verbal agreement, as denoted in Sky Sports Germany yesterday, doesn't really mean much in the grand scheme of things and it's funny to see that Sky Sports UK has actually disagreed with Sky Sports Germany. Let's get into it. Now I'm actually uniquely qualified to give you insight into the sporting processes and decision making that goes into hiring Liverpool FC's new manager. Why you might ask? Because I'm the Takoyaki man. No, sorry, I meant I'm the Taki Minamino man. No, that's not right either. Cool shirt, right? Because I'm the Miyazaki man. And actually, in another life, I'm actually the lead architect and consultant on some major software pieces for some multinational companies in the UK, including huge global multinational sporting authority in the UK. You know, holistically oversee the implementation of all the back office systems. And I need to know the end to end processes of each department, including the hiring department of CEOs, managing directors, financial controllers, sporting authority, decision makers and governance over all of the UK, including many, many sports authorities. With that in mind, I kind of have insight into the decision making process and the hiring process of these key positions. So let's get into it. So at the start of the journey, you need to identify your hiring criteria for candidates for this particular vacancy, the Liverpool FC managerial role. These are called leads. So you have your big group of leads, right? And there's only so many leads that actually, you know, are even worth talking about. But straight away, you can disqualify some leads based on some variables or criteria that don't fit what you're looking for. So Mourinho can go out, Conte can go out, Thomas Tuchel can go out, Rafa Benitez, no matter how much I love Rafa de Gaffa, he's out as well. So you have a small pool of candidates you immediately look for. These are your initial batch of leads that you nurture through the journey by nurturing through the journey what i mean is at each given stage of a lead right so you might have their profile you might have internal discussions you might have internal preferences straight away but you have to discount bias you have to look at the data at each given stage of the lead journey so nurturing the journey through you look at the candidates and what they represent and what they can offer and how they align to what the club is looking to do long term but also short term and after you have gone through the initial data sets and then you've decided perhaps on the top three or top five candidates. So in most cases, you might look at a batch size of about five to 10 candidates because you don't know about your initial pool. You don't know even if you commit the work to nurturing that lead, whether they are going to commit to your club ultimately if there is an agreement internally on the right lead to go for. But because Liverpool FC's managerial hot seat is such a hot commodity, you're probably going to whittle down the list about three because you'd accept ultimately it's likely that the person you offered the job to would accept the job, right? So probably Liverpool have whittled it down to three. And at each given stage of the nurturing process of the lead journey, the lead process, you're going to have tasks assigned to what you need to do. You need to do background checks on the manager. Look at their family, look at their ability to relocate, look at their English language ability, talk to friends, talk to their network, talk to people who know them personally, talk to people who know them professionally, talk, see their perception in the media, see how they handle press conferences, and then you'll start to score the leads. So these three particularly will be known as hot leads, and you will discount it anyone that doesn't have a qualifying grade score or appropriate score to match the criteria that you're looking for. But additionally, you have to look at them holistically. You have to do your due diligence as well. Ethically, how are they? Have they done anything in the past that's questionable? Is there any spider webs on social media that they're gonna crawl out racism or anything that discounts them, disqualifies them? Have they got appropriate coaching badges? You'd assume they would have, right? Have they got all of the appropriate intangibles, interpersonal skills, communication skills? But obviously, because you've narrowed it down to three already, you're probably well wedded to the fact that one of these three will ultimately become your manager because, because they probably would have already satisfied the minimum prerequisite visits to allow them to be those three that you focus on right so each given stage of lead journey as you run them through the funnel as you run them through the process of getting to know them building the case for them to be the next Liverpool manager you slowly tick off the tasks one by one and say okay he's fantastic in the media he is likely to commit long term he is likely to look for the next project he is likely to be lured away to Spain or Barcelona if the offer comes he is likely to be able to face criticism has he faced criticism before how is he likely to respond to the transfer budget that we have available for this season and following season what does he need in terms of infrastructure what does he need in terms of background staff does he look like the right figurehead for the Liverpool FC brand but also the person to bring the community together right Hillsborough the memorial the club the heart the soul the passion of the fans understanding the philosophy is he well spoken is he well dressed is he likely to be a divisive figure amongst the boardroom amongst FSG is he likely to have high demands how good would it be to work with him day in day out you're going to be colleagues you're going to be brother in arms you've got to come to the right decision how is he going to fit in infrastructure with Edwards and Richard Hughes is he going to be led by the data is he going to oppose the data is he going to be influenced by the data but make his own decisions is he going to push forward his own transfers what kind of players does he look for what system does he play there's so many different variables that you're going to have to tick off and check 
as tasks one by one to ultimately come down to the preferred candidate and then you look at financials. Now, I don't think financials would be a problem for any managerial appointment, but things like compensation fee, fee structure, transfer fee demands and budget demands for the players, wage demands, etc. All these kind of things come into account. But this is maybe towards the end of the lead funnel process. You have to be realistic in your expectations. Once you've identified the right candidate, you've probably got to do what it takes to actually procure them because you've done all that legwork to identify them. And then once you're satisfied that these three are ultimately three that are worth pursuing because you've done the due diligence, you've done all the background checks, you've ticked off all the tasks and they meet the minimum threshold to become the new Liverpool manager, which means that all three of them ideally could sit in the Liverpool management seat and bring on success of the new era, the new chapter. You'd be happy with any one of the three appointments. Obviously, you've got to chronologically list them in highest priority to lowest priority, the number one choice, number two choice, and number three choice, which is why it's actually very premature to say that Javi Alonso was the first choice as quoted by in the media, and that Ruben Amarin is the first choice post Alonso declaring that he wants to stay by Leverkusen, you don't actually know. The intermediaries would have been sent out to feel their desire to come to Liverpool, gauge their interest in coming to Liverpool, and that's what always is done, right? Even with players and with transfers, you go through the intermediaries, you go through the agents, you ask them, would you be interested? If we made this proposal, look at our project plan, look at our future vision, would you be interested in leading this club in this manual hot seat? obviously following on from Jurgen Klopp. And I really don't like the media narrative that uh, following on from Jurgen Klopp is an absolutely impossible job. People always think of what ifs in negative light, in a negative tone. There's a positive tone to what if as well. What if the manager takes the fish to water and absolutely explodes out of the races and wins the first 20 games? What if he succeeds more than Klopp in the opening three years? What if they bring about the new golden era of Liverpool FC? What if that's a possibility? There are possibilities on a positive tone as well. Anyone can succeed at Liverpool with a bit of luck if the stars align and Klopp has given the best handover possible in terms of infrastructure and the squad. So I don't want to hear anything around the guarantee to fail in the shadow of Klopp because it's just not true. It's your hypothesis and there's nothing back in substance to that. You don't know until it happens. Anyway, I digress. But as I was saying, it seems as though Xabi Alonso was identified as probably one of the three preferential candidates for obvious reasons. The connection to Liverpool, he's flying higher by Leverkusen, tactical acumen, absolutely top notch, going to win the Bundesliga, going through in the Europa League as well. Although, you know, a bit of a scare against Karabag, he needed late, late goals there, but Liverpool scored late goals as well. So maybe great affinity for Liverpool in that regard as well. However, probably didn't progress to the stage where he was really showing potential commitment to Liverpool. It's through the agency that he actually declared he's more likely to stay at Bayer Leverkusen for many different reasons. He obviously said he's a young coach, he wants to build something at Bayer Leverkusen. So having been identified as a hot lead and going through the intermediaries, it was quickly established that Liverpool pulled out of the race. Now putting out the race doesn't mean that we were only chasing for Javi Alonso. You've got to put these feelers out in this initial legwork in terms of this lead process for all of your preferential candidates. We know of Ruben Amarin, there's been talks. We know of Javi Alonso, there's been talks as well. It seems as though De Zerbi is not one of the three preferential candidates because they've done that due diligence on that initial task list for the lead process. And we don't know who else is in there. Is Nagelsmann in the conversation? It's all hush hush at the moment. Lots of media want Ange Postacoglu because of how great he's taken to the Tottenham role and the attacking football and his humour and ability to talk with the media and his previous success in silverware as well. So we don't know who is the priority candidate because all we know is there's been discussion going afoot. We don't know the ins and outs of the boardroom of Liverpool and what they're discussing and the metrics and criteria for sorting out who is the number one priority to chase. All we know is the legwork had been done on Javi Alonso for obvious reasons because anyone would be chasing Javi Alonso in the Liverpool hot seat. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be the right person to lead the uh, managerial research. And we know that Ruben Amarin's been spoken to already. This verbal agreement could very much be in place is slightly different than the tone of the title of this video. However, what that actually means is when you speak to the agent, what kind of contract are they looking for? We'd be looking to offer a three-year contract initially to any Liverpool candidate. Would they be open to that? Would they be open to accepting the challenge to prove within a three-year period that they deserve an extension to that three-year contract? Would you want a long-term commitment straight away? Would you want a short-term commitment to see it year on year like Conte does sometimes, right? To see whether the project is evolving and whether he gets a transfer budget in as well. There's many, many different factors here as to what you need to put out to the agent to try to lure them into that hot seat, but also understand their demands in terms of the budget they want, the transfer fees that they want, the backroom staff that they want, the type of players that they want, the type of philosophy they'd be bringing in. Are they tactically flexible? Are they flexible in terms of how operationally the whole organisation exists in terms of Richard Hughes and Michael Edwards' influence on his role as well? Are they happy with the infrastructure, the training? Do they need new technology, new gadgets, new AI? 
new health coach, whatever, whatever. You need to understand the whole package you're getting with this manager, what the demands are, and how likely they are to accept and be happy in the current infrastructure in place. And they should be, because we invested a lot in infrastructure and in the stands, right, and in technology and in the training ground and bringing the youth teams together. Are they happy to bring about the youth players through and do they identify any of those particular youth players as playing a key role which would save the club transfer budget but also intrinsically you know increased feeling amongst the youth ranks that really they will be given an opportunity and not just shuffled out like Chelsea hoarded golden wonder kids and then sent out for financial fair play unless one really really breaks through right so loads of things come into consideration here and there's a back and forth game between the the managerial team at Liverpool and the manager and his agent and networks however it won't be directly with managers at this stage because you need to get permission from the owning club whether it's sporting in Portugal whether it's Tottenham and Postacoglu by Leverkusen you need to get permission to talk to the manager directly and at this stage as well managers are very likely to kind of delegate responsibility to the agency because he's got stuff to win he knocked out Benfica they're through in the Portuguese cup they're leading the Portuguese league they're four points ahead Benfica with a game in hand they won a crucial crucial game with ruthless efficiency last week against Benfica he is doing amazing things in fact he's going to probably win the second title in a long time for sporting club however he could have won three because one of them was incredibly close and he just fell off towards the end but the good thing about Ruben Amarin as well is he's reinvented that sporting team because he's lost key key players mm. Pedro Porro at Tottenham left right also Ugarte left as well Matthias Nunch now at Man City went to Wolves he left as well so many key players has left and he's reinvigorated the team, reinvented the team with players and youth coming in and they're looking deadlier than ever with more attacking philosophy but he's built on defensive stability because defence wins your leagues, not just goals. Goals win you matches, defence and keeping clean sheets and that team camaraderie win you the league and everyone seems to love him and he's well spoken as well so I can absolutely identify with Ruben Amarin as a character of the ilk of a Liverpool manager in the future and possibly in the present as well. However, saying that though, Ruben Amarin, one of the preferred candidates, which is obvious, how far has it progressed? He may have intimated through his agents they'd be willing to accept a three-year contract or he might have imposed onto Liverpool that he'd like a three-year contract. Either way, news has leaked of that particular discussion and even if there's a provisional agreement in place, Liverpool haven't offered anything. They've just got an understanding of what he wants or he's got an understanding of what Liverpool are prepared to propose and that's where we're at. Javi Alonso is out of the race completely out of the race which means who are the other two candidates because I presume at least a three you'd always go to rule of three here because if one rejects one is pondering one is thinking and a 50 50 shot at the other one you're going to get one of the three preferential candidates and you've eliminated all the others through the lead process which means you'd be happy with any of the three even though it's a slightly different flavor slightly different direction it's just doing your due diligence and making sure that you have room to maneuver if worse comes to worse from negotiations or life situations or personal circumstances with one of managerial candidates and they, they pull out for example so having identified them and talked with agents to find out the demands and how they would adjust to Liverpool's demands and how Liverpool could be flexible to adjust to their demands as well you go on to the next stage and the next stage is negotiating with the club with an appropriate fee and how you manage the media narrative and what is leaked and purposely leaking stuff to close journalists to each respective club acknowledging and respecting that each club has their own campaign underway and Klopp still has it all to play for all to win the season Europa League we're well placed for favourites for that we're in second place in the Premier League with a point against Man United that puts us only second place through goal difference still ahead of Man City so we still have the title in our hands if we win every single game bearing that Arsenal do not do the same but Arsenal have a harder fixture list against Tottenham and against Man United and they're in the Champions League as well now tied 2-2 with Bayern Munich right that's not an easy picture to get through and having gone through that they're going to play Real Madrid or Manchester City which is not an easy tie as well it's mentally draining and obviously a lot of players really put focus and priority in Champions League because I don't know I really really like the four winning Champions League the champions of Europe it really means something you get a number to your name obviously Real Madrid are far and away the most successful but Liverpool have six baby six let's talk about six baby Klopp's famous quote that means something and I think Arsenal really 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 want to win that Man City show want to show the last season wasn't a fluke one nil in the final Lukaku Lakaka missing a sitter right I think this season has a lot of things to play for and that really plays on the mind. You don't want to derail sporting clubs' chances in their own league and their cup league. He wants to focus on, on the league itself, but he could, through his agency, give an indication that if the job was offered, he'd be willing to accept it, which puts a lot of food for thought in Liverpool's position because Liverpool probably want to wrap it up early to make preparations for next season, understand where to go in pre-season, the type of players that you're going to approach and bring the players through the lead processes because once you've qualified them as a lead, then you need to make it into an opportunity and the opportunity is you need to do the 
the legwork to give that lead once they become established the best possible chance for succeeding long term because once they're in place they're no longer a lead they're now faculty they're a member of staff and you need to give them all the tools and infrastructure and pre-planning to make sure they succeed and the forecast for doing all of this very well with predictive analytics is the highest chance to succeed now and long term so hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into the managerial appointment process to date at the moment and which is why i don't like the media narrative and how they're fishing for clickbait and now a lot of fellow content creators as well whether red fans or they're man united fans or other content creators in youtube and online as well you know fishing for for that bait those headlines right ruben Amarin to Liverpool verbal agreement here we go etc Florian Plettenberg he's a chance as well he said Javi Alonso would be going to Bayern Munich trying to stir absolute shish kebab there as well my goodness was it Kavis Overcall at Sky Sports UK discounted that even Liverpool said that's completely false that narrative is way too premature not at all there's no preferential candidate we're still going through due diligence still going through the process at the moment which i completely believe because these things take time you don't want to rush the appointment this is the most crucial appointment after michael edwards i'd say actually no maybe equal that liverpool can possibly make succeeding jürgen klopp and ensuring our next golden chapter our next golden future so you know these clickbait merchants yeah stay away from them i don't like fishing at all i don't like fish i don't eat fish i don't eat much sushi that's a lie i eat sushi but not the fish type i don't really like fish fish and chips not bad right battered cod and, and all that but this is the type of fish that i don't mind so much this is chewy taiyaki with custard cream it is a fish but only in kind of dessert dessert form what i mean by that it's like a kind of fluffy little pancake woot, 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 woot. the zoidberg right from futurama but inside oh my god I love fish now. <laughs> it's like custard shoe cream right with vanilla pod. Oh, so good. What I'm really saying is this is a channel with substance and abundance and hopefully I've backed it up. Like if you really like this video, it's not false advertising and clickbait, you know, headline making like a lot of the, the other channels like this, for example, right? Look at this. Green tea, oi ocha, reduces body fat, oi ocha, unsweetened bold green tea. Now, if this were true, and I absolutely dunk this stuff daily, right? Now, if this was true, right? I wouldn't be the chubby obese mofo that I currently am. I eat like an absolute beast monster. I've got a sweet tooth. Look at this dad bod. Actually, to be honest, not bad, right? Maybe this stuff really works. I digress. <laughs> so whilst Liverpool are diligently working quietly in the background, away from the media attention, right? Not to distract from Klopp's current campaign, not to distract from the managers, from opposition clubs, their current campaign as well, out of respect for the club and the manager and the personnel, it's all talked through agents, right, and executives at the moment. But when they do come up with a preferential candidate, if they're willing to discuss contract negotiations right now, then a contract will be presented. They'll go over the finer details, they'll knock out all of the kinks and all of the clauses. And once both sides are truly happy with all the clauses in place, all of the agreements, in the contract itself for example i have time supply of oyocha really they should sponsor me right someone sponsor me pretty please then it's about ticking all of the dots pen to paper right the agreement with the club obviously with their permission having talked to the the agent and, and the player and the manager directly making sure the clubs are aligned with the media narrative when to announce it how to announce it how to announce your existing fans that they're of how to announce the liverpool's fans so this is our new man to replace jürgen klopp and what it truly means and all of the production values that are associated with that we can only do the production values the marketing etc when you have that person in place but currently it's very unlikely that we're going to get a real Real, real agreement until things are finalized i.e sporting win the portuguese league win the portuguese cup liverpool win the europa cup win the premier league everything is absolutely finalized and finished and then we make the announcement at the soonest opportunity to raise the fan base now if we're celebrating it'll really really be a, a memorable moment to, to mention this but even if we're defeated ultimately then you want to mention it to give the, the fans an uplift this actually plays plays a crucial role but with ruben amarin's body language in the media non-commitment to sporting post this season you'd expect that probably he is the preferential liverpool candidate because there's no smoke without a fire and obviously there have been those verbal talks in place and there probably hasn't been an offer made but he is one of the three that i keep alluding to um you'd assume that he is the right person but you never know right he might be in second place they might have identified who knows another candidate that's all on the hush hush that they're having the preliminary talks with at the moment and putting out the feelers where they'd be interested for the role and the job and everything that i've discussed or aforementioned in, in this particular video but it does seem as though amarin will be leaving sporting at the end of the season that's to me that's pretty bang on and barcelona pulling out the race because they believe once again in the media that liverpool 
are his preferred destination as well. So Barcelona putting out, trying to convince Xavi to stay long term. It's really funny to hear Luis Enrique um, quote that he is more of a Barcelona manager than Xavi. Xavi wouldn't enjoy playing under under a Xavi-led Barcelona. That's hilarious. I digress again. Yeah. So no smoke without a fire. Amarin is definitely in the race. He might be preferred. He might be the preferred candidate. He might not be. He's definitely one of the candidates. I think Liverpool have other options as well. They're discussing things. Maybe they impress. Hopefully they're not impressed by the. Um, 100 page dossier that Brendan Rodgers presented in front of him because no, no chance that we're going to get another manager with a massive portrait of himself as soon as you enter his mansion. But we should be a little bit kind to Brendan Rodgers, right? Because he, he was lending his house to Jurgen Klopp and without that, Klopp has nowhere to live. But once again, things are done via a process. Process is the key word here and things are done via stages and you've got to satisfy each stage. You have to run a validation past each stage to make sure the data you've collected aligns to what you expect and aligns to what you want in, in order to progress that candidate to the next stage of the funnel and only when everything is in place and you've built that vision and you've built that business case that commercial case that personal case for that candidate to present to the board or present to everyone else that this is the person we go for then you commit to really showing a statement of intent to the club to say that we're interested in your manager how much let's haggle and negotiate the compensation for the manager for you guys to release him to us and then you go to the manager discuss with him and his intermediaries the expectations on his side and the expectations from Liverpool as well and if, once everything aligns properly and you meet in person over some Tully's coffee some vanilla custody taiyaki fish pancake and then it really is a formality and it's up to the marketing team and the graphic design team and the website content creators the CRM manager to work together for the introductory package and schedule things up for the inevitable announcement and appointment as well and you might leak it to local journalists as well as a favour for them doing good by you in the media and actually presenting a narrative and a vision for the club as the club dictates because ultimately anyone in the know would be following the club's prerogative because if you cross the boss if you cross the club they ain't giving you no no inside information if you want to keep your role if you want to keep your position of getting inside information then you hush hush and you do what you're told Liverpool FC are the final boss baby <laughs> And I'm confident with Michael Edwards in place, Richard Hughes in place, we've got good guys leading from the front. And no matter who we get, Liverpool FC, we're going to win things. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And lots of content to come from the Miyazaki man, Ichiban. Because Liverpool FC Daisuke. We love Liverpool here in Japan. Thank you, everyone. Make sure you like the video. Help me beat the algorithm. Really, really helps this video get seen. Lots of exciting content coming up. And really, i got to catch all of those other Liverpool content creators. I don't know how they got so many views and subscribers. The algorithm hates me. Till next time. Janet. Peace.